Hey guys, I'm back with the next 10 metal bands you haven't heard but should. It's a all analog video until actually no, there's two CDs at the end, so I'm already lying. But fuck it, we move. Anyway, um, the first thing I want to talk about, which you know, if if you're gonna be a dick and skip ahead, go ahead. But if you're a real metal maniac, stick around. Is the new seven inch of my band Razor Forge. Um, I self-released the seven inch, which was expensive and a grueling process, but I'm really proud of it. Um, I play guitar and bass on both tracks and do vocals on the second, which is a cover of Metal Lucifer. And then on the A side, the main song is the singer from Witching Hour, one of my favorite bands. And um, the drums on both songs are provided by Oscari from Iron Griffin. So I've got to work with two of my favorite musicians. Uh, we have this really killer artwork by Tony Hiatoma, a Finnish legend as well. Um, and yeah, I'm really proud of this one. It's been a lot of work and the response has been really cool. So I'm very grateful. I'll put a link in the bio if you want to order a copy. They're not too expensive. I've kept it as low as I realistically can. And yeah, if you if you wonder what the sound is, it's kind of a mix of obviously very much heavy metal with some speed, some thrash, some black metal. So it's sort of, if you take some first wave black metal, some epic US heavy metal, some new wave of British heavy metal, and then some kind of Teutonic thrash, a bit of Slayer, um, a bit of Exciter and Razor, you, you, you get kind of close. Um, Disaster, Niflheim, Aura Noir, I guess are all um, good comparisons too for newer bands. And yeah, I, I'm really pleased with this. It's um, on black vinyl, 45 RPM, because only speed is real, there we go. Uh, yeah, limited to 250 copies. I've got some distros out there, which you can find the links to via the Bandcamp, or if you order from me, I ship worldwide. And you know, I know some people, I'm not being a dick, but I know some people like stuff signed in that, and I'm happy to always do that kind of stuff. So yeah, thank you for your interest. And the reason I picked a seven inch is because it's the format that kind of gatekeeps itself. Uh, I know it's not the most collectible unless you're a real kind of diehard heavy metal fan. Like um, a lot of my favorite releases, uh, like New Wave of British Heavy Metal 7 Inches and uh, Death Metal 7 Inches from uh, between the demo and the first album. So it's a format I hold very near and dear. And it's just uh, something that I think is very true and it fits Razor Forge. Um, so far, both releases have been on 7 Inch. And yeah, I, I like it, even though it's a real fucking pain. Anyway. That's the end of my self-promotion. It's just that um, I thought that this would be a good window to talk about that. And seeing as you guys sometimes ask me about music and my music, uh, there's your answer. So anyway, let's get into some underground mayhem. First, we have Mortem from Peru, who I recently had the pleasure of witnessing live at Killtown Death Fest, which was here in London this year. This is the demon speaks, sorry, the devil speaks in tongues. I, I had the demon in my head because I was listening to Demon Head last night and there we go. Um, this, the, I mean, the early Mortem albums and demo, uh, which I do kind of have a copy on the way. It just seems to keep getting lost by DHL. But this for me is the, the Mortem album. If you're going to, you know, if you've not heard this band, um, you know, and you like stuff like Sadistic Intent, Possessed, the very earliest, like Morbid Angel stuff, more the demos than the albums. This is, you know, that, but with that gloriously fierce kind of South American feel to it. I love these guys. Um, it's like the pinnacle of evil death metal. And this album is just the crowning jewel in a flawless discography. Like, uh, they did an album that I can't remember the name of it because it's kind of like Latin-y looking. And um, I'm really shit with that kind of stuff. But in, I think it was like 2016, I want to say, is the last one, full length at least. Um and it's just, it, you know, it's still they're still putting out fantastic albums. You know, they're not one of those bands that put out really killer cult stuff and then went really lame or just did nothing. So yeah, uh, Mortem is a really strong start. Now we're coming back to Europe with Abhoration from Norway. And uh, I really like the demo, which was maybe, what, 2020, 2021, that kind of time. But this album, in my opinion, blows it out of the water. It's that first album called Demonolatry. Um, Demonolatry, you get the idea. It's on Invictus Productions, which is, you know, them and Sepulchral Voice for me, both those labels, every single thing they put out has just been fucking killer the last few years. And um, this is no exception. Very necrovore fueled death metal. There's um, a lot of like late 80s death metal um, with maybe just, you know, some smatterings of some kind of death thrash and stuff from South America, but a bit more of that kind of 
Morbid Angel, Necrowall Possessed kind of sound once again. Um, it's, it's my favorite distillation of death metal and Aberration are a really, really killer example. Um, this just riffs a plenty, evil as fuck, just how you want it. Next we have Adversarial from Canada, another band I had the pleasure of seeing at Kill Town, funnily enough. And this is their new album on Dark Descent called Solitude with the Eternal. Uh, their other albums are really killer too, but this I think is their best one to date. It's like, um, the best description I can give of these guys is bestial immolation. Um, kind of a bit like Dear Quisitor from Denmark in that respect, where it's just like, the drums are insane. The riffs are very um, sort of immolation-y, very kind of, you know, atmospheric and dark. But they've just got this kind of bestial, just malicious, really aggressive kind of a feel to them, which is just really addictive. They were fantastic live, sounded massive for a three-piece as well. And yeah, Canada still giving us the most savage stuff, it seems. Next, we have Morgul from the Czech Republic. Um, this is their new LP, Domination of the Beast on Dumentia. I really like these guys. I reviewed this um, a little while ago, actually, for the website, and I was like, this is really cool. And then I saw them live at uh, Thrash Nightmare in the Czech Republic. Absolute maniacs. The guys put on one hell of a show. It's kind of like watching a young Death Hammer, in a sense. They're very much like, you know, show no mercy and endless pain with a bit more black metal, just spicing it up. Um, the guys have put on a rabid show and it made me love them even more. And then I bought the LP and listening to it again with the memory of the show, you know, I, it made me love it. It gave me a whole new appreciation. I love it when a live band surpasses expectations. And yeah, this is just really fun, evil, thrash speed, black mix. Um, a really nice kind of concoction of heavy metal mayhem. Now we're getting on to some smaller things if I don't drop and or break them all. So first we have... Iron Curtain, this is the first of two Jawbreaker tapes. Tapes. Sorry, I recently got in a trade with my friend Gustav. Iron Curtain is killer. They're like thrash and speed with a touch of black metal, but um, there's a bit more kind of, of a tank and venom and um, Avenger. Like There's an almost British feel to it, especially in the vocals that have that kind of whiskey-soaked kind of a hoarseness to them that I really love. This is their new album, Savage Dawn. I think Dying Victims did the LP and CD, maybe. But, um, yeah, this is obviously the tape version. Really cool release. Uh, the artwork's really killer as well. I like this fucking demonic dude with more spikes. You know, I think he's giving uh, Ruben from Butcher a run for his money with spikes. Um, looks killer. Next, we have an Indian band with Mustang. This is their new album, who's next? Beyond Raging Thunder. Sorry about that. I have to... Too much to memorize, but um, these guys are just true heavy metal, straight to the bone, you know. There's a bit of Riot, a bit of Judas Priest, a bit of Iron Maiden. They kind of mix, like, American and British heavy metal really nicely, and it's just a really pleasant listen. Amazing guitar work. The vocals are incredible. Really nice mix. Uh, great artwork. It's the whole package. And they're playing the Keep It True warm-up next year, so it's nice to see a band from as far shores as India coming over to Europe and doing their thing, so I'm quite excited for that. Next, we have two seven inches from um, my friend Wolf Cult Religion in the Netherlands. We recently did a trade, and the first is Stormbreaker from the Netherlands. And um, these guys are really cool. Uh, I didn't know what to expect from the artwork. They are clearly a nautical themed band, I have learned since. Uh, they sing in Dutch. And they're, I think they they sing quite specifically about a region of the Netherlands, from what I understand. And um, these two songs are really interesting. They're like folky heavy metal, but with a kind of black metal feel. There's a touch of bands like Urfaust coming through. I know one of the guys um, is a singer in Besvaring, which is a really cool band, actually, I saw in Denmark. Um, really powerful vocals. For me, they're the, um, you know, the music's great and all, but the vocals really elevate it to a great new level. And yeah, it's just really enchanting. It's hard to liken them to another band, but if you think of some kind of darker, folky stuff, not kind of the silly, jaunty stuff, mix it with heavy metal, a bit of like Hammerheart by Bathory maybe. And yeah, it's, it's a really cool little 7-inch. I'm curious to see what they do next. Next, we have uh, Gotthammer, which is, I'm pretty sure it's German for Godhammer with the Ancient Nature 7-inch, a short-lived bestial black and death band from... I'm sure they're Canadian. If I fucked that up, then I'm very sorry. But again, it's on Wolf Cult Religion. There's like, I think, seven songs on this 7-inch. And I also have the compilation CD from this trade, which is all of their material. All their songs are like one and a half to three minutes of just 
super rabid, crazy, intense Black Death Mayhem. Definitely a cool band. And I think they disbanded. They were only around for a couple years, but um, they, they were really cool, and it's a, it's a shame. But yeah, they've got some killer material, so go back and check it out. Now we have the new Capilla Ardiente album. I think I'm saying that probably very wrong. They're from Chile. They uh, feature the wonderful Philippe, also um, who sung on the recent Skald album. Uh, bassist from Destroyer 666. He was in Niflheim. Like, the, the man's in a lot of cool shit. Um, incredible musician. And I think in terms of vocals, I really like the Skald album. But here he really, really nails it. Um, if you like Candle Mass, Solitude, Eternus, just epic doom with loads of atmosphere. It's a really stunning release. Sorry, it's called uh, Where Gods Live and Men Die. I should have said that at the start. And yeah, amazing stuff. I was very impressed with this. And lastly, we have Steinras, some very cool black metal. I didn't know what this band was like. Um, they were completely new to me. And uh, I really liked it. They're sort of an interesting mix. It's very conventionally black metal, but there's just these little bits of punk and stuff that, um, I don't know, they kind of remind me of um, some of that kind of Canadian stuff from about five or six years ago that had that little punky bit. They're kind of uh, there's one song on this especially, I I've, I've need to get some more jewel cases as you can see, uh, Crawler of the Crypt, that just has this really kind of hooky chorus and I really liked it, so yeah, check out Steinrest, that was an interesting one, and that is 10 metal bands you haven't heard but should, I really kind of blazed through that because uh, after rambling about my own 7 inch, which I realise sounds excellent, please do not take that out of context, but um, it's... You know, I, I try not to make these too long. I don't want to take an hour of your day, which you could spend just listening to a couple records. So compact it. Pure Heavy Metal Mayhem in about 12 minutes. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope you guys check out the new Razor Forge because I really appreciate it. If you order it, you're a real fucking maniac and I appreciate you. And hit me up if uh, you want to distro it or review it or interview me for whatever reason. Check out the bands and labels that I've talked about. They will appreciate the support and stay fucking underground. Until next time.